Imagine this, you've finally got your urinary symptoms related to a big prostate under control from taking some prostate medication. You're feeling better, you're sleeping better, your flow is stronger, and you don't have to rush so much to the toilet in the daytime. Then you read some headline online that claims that the medication that you're taking to improve your urinary symptoms may actually increase your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Chabert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic located here on the Gold Coast. In a recent video I posted looking at prostate medication, a viewer of mine posted a question that was there a risk between taking prostate medication and potentially increasing the probability of developing Alzheimer's disease at some stage in the future? Is this true or is this purely speculation? Well, in today's video, I wanted to highlight three studies that have been published over the last few years that explore this possibility and put those claims to rest. As always, if you have a comment or a question, please leave it in the comment section down below. It's a great opportunity for us all to learn from each other as we all have a variety of different experiences through various prostate journeys. Before I highlight for you three studies that look at this claim, I just wanted to give you a quick overview with regards prostate medication. In essence, we've got two main categories. One are drugs called alpha blockers, and the second are drugs called 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. Alpha blockers are drugs like tamsulosin, prazosin, alfusosin, celodosin. They're smooth muscle relaxants. They work on the prostate and the bladder neck. They relax that area and can give men a stronger flow and make them go less often. Common side effects include postural hypotension, feeling a bit dizzy when you go from sitting to standing, or potentially rhinitis, which is where men can have a feeling of a head cold. 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, examples of which are things like Proscar, Finasteride, or Dutasteride, Avidat. Now, these drugs work by preventing the conversion of testosterone to its active form, and by doing so, they result in cytoreduction. We shrink the prostate, and we can get a reduction in about 20 to 30% in the prostate size. 5 alpha reductase inhibitors are better if we have a bigger prostate when we're trying to affect some shrinkage. Common side effects with 5 alpha reductase inhibitors include changes on sexual function, reduction in libido, erections not as good, erection is not as durable. But what about the possibility of increasing the risk of Alzheimer's disease? Well, where did this claim come from? Well, most of these claims emanated around 10 years ago, and there were some reports that were suggesting that with the prostate shrinking drugs, the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, that there could be an increase in memory loss as men progress through life. Now, it's important to note that these were observational studies, and they were performed between 2015 and 2018, and they actually did find that there was a statistical association between taking five ARIs and a dementia diagnosis, particularly in the first couple of years after men had started taking the medication. But here's the important thing. Association does not mean causation. Now, let me highlight that. So these studies, they couldn't tell whether the medication was causing the problem or whether or not patients were already beginning to evolve some of these symptoms, the symptoms of early dementia. And because they were seeking medical help and involved in a medical environment because they were having their urinary symptoms uh, addressed, that they were more likely to seek medical attention and therefore more likely to be diagnosed. Some of you may be aware of an association that existed previously about vasectomy and a prostate cancer diagnosis. And it's still a, a question that I get from time to time in my clinical practice at the prostate clinic. Men do say to me, if I have a vasectomy, am I more likely to develop prostate cancer at some time in the future? They've seen some report about this association. Well, what actually happens is that those men who have a vasectomy already have a relationship most likely with a urologist and are therefore more likely to go down the pathway of having PSA testing or screening for prostate cancer and are therefore more likely to be diagnosed. 
it is not the process of having a vasectomy that increases the risk of prostate cancer. Association versus causation. One of the studies I wanted to look at was a study by Garcia and his colleagues that was published back in 2022. Now, it was a large population-based study. There were over 100,000 uh, men that were studied, and it basically looked at the association between 5-alpha reductase inhibitors and the rate of dementia. And what they did find was that there was a small but definite increase in the incidence of dementia in those men that were taking this medication. Now, importantly, the dementia signal decreased over time, which suggested that, there, that this association between dementia and the drugs was actually detection bias rather than causation. Again, in the same way that we saw with vasectomy, what this means is that men that were treated actually were more likely to have a relationship with a doctor and therefore more likely to be diagnosed early. The other thing to be aware of, particularly with BPH, is that BPH causes men to wake up significant times at night, and that in itself can make men tired and fatigued, and that in and of itself has its own set of issues. Another study by Welk and his colleagues that was published in 2017, again, was a population-based registry study from Canada. And again, it looked at the use of 5-alpha reductase inhibitors and the potential association with Alzheimer's disease. Again, in, this, in the same way that we saw with the previous study, initially there was a higher risk of being diagnosed with dementia. However, with time, this relative increase in risk fell, declined with time, which is suggestive that it is consistent with detection or selection bias rather than actually being associated with drug use. You would expect that if it was the drug itself that was causing the problem, that the relative risk of being diagnosed with dementia would increase with time, not decrease. Before I talk about the final study, which was looking more at alpha blockers, please, have you taken a prostate medication? Are you on 5-alpha reductase inhibitors or do you take an alpha blocker? What's your experience? How do you feel your cognitive function is if you are currently taking those drugs? If you're prepared to, please leave a comment and share it uh, down below. Now, the last study I wanted to look at was by Latvala and his colleagues published in 2022. There was another study by Kingsley that was produced in 2024, and it looked at alpha blockers, an example of which is tamsulosin, and the association with dementia. Now, several studies have highlighted a potential association between alpha blockers and increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. The challenge that we have is that the effect varies from study to study. There are different methodologies between the studies. And so any association that we're seeing lacks consistency. Now, if we look particularly at tamsulosin, because it has been more extensively studied, some registries have found a higher dementia rate in men treated with that tamsulosin compared to men on other BPH drugs or no BPH drugs at all. The problem is that the picture that we are seeing is inconsistent. And when analyses carefully account for health differences and protopathic bias, the association often weakens. In short, there is a signal in some data sets, but it's far from definitive. And in the same way that we saw with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, it tends to wane with time. The bottom line with all of this is that there are some signals about association, and it's very difficult to separate association from causal. And as I highlighted in these studies, it does appear as if the association declines with time and that we're seeing a relatively small spike round about the time that these drugs are started, but it's not consistent with time. And it appears that this is an association that may be due to detection bias rather than being causal in and of itself. This is one of the challenges that we have with medicine, that observational studies are just that, and they can be in many ways hypothesis generating rather than demonstrating specific causation. So what should you do? <clears throat> I guess the first thing is not, not to panic, but to be informed. 
These medications do have real benefits for men that are struggling with urinary issues and that the evidence about a potential link is certainly inconclusive. As always, have this discussion with your local doctor if you're unsure in any way and ensure that you make the decision that you feel is right for you. As always, if you have comments or questions, leave them in the comment section down below. If you'd like to know more about your prostate, have a look at this video or alternatively this video here. Until the next time, take care of your prostate.